Hello, golf fans, and welcome back to another Rotor Pros PGA video. I'm Chris Durrell, and joining me is the other member of our PGA team, Dane Chenault. How's it going tonight, buddy? It's going good. Ready for another week. It's a fun time of year. Finally, we're we're back to a no course rotation week. Thank goodness. Um, and I think last week was the last one for a while, unless I'm mistaken. I think you're right. Um, so really, really excited for that. Um, like these a lot more than this two-day course rotation. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so last week, we, we came off a pretty good week the week before. We got to talk about it on the video. How was uh, how did you follow that up this week at the Pebble? I did not have a great week. Um, Ricky, I ended up on Ricky again in DFS after I said I wasn't going to. <laughs> um, it just kind of it kind of fit uh, the mold. And um, he, of course, missed the cut. I had a five of six in um, my single entry lineup. Did not cash in that. I did have Berger on that team and still didn't cash because the rest of my uh, five um, were not good. The other four were not good. Molinari tailed off starting Saturday after he topped that one off the tee. Yeah. Uh, the start is round. Uh, that kind of made me sick. Everybody else tailed off too. 20 max. I had a few six of sixes in there. Um, they kind of fizzled out before Sunday as well. So it was kind of a um, watching burger for our one and done. So I'll hand it yeah, over to nice. you. I know you hit that outright. Um, we each had three outright bets that we posted last week. So so that's something we can get into after uh, you break down your sweat from Sunday. For sure. No, it was, it was awesome. Um, I know we talked about last week, a couple guys we were looking at betting. And then in chat, before we got the DJ news, we put in some bets. Yeah. I had Norlander um burger and geez i can't remember the other guy he was in contention too. oh molinari um those were three of my four outrights i had a fowler outright in there too and i think uh, i think we discussed this earlier this afternoon where we're just going to pretty much bet ricky until he wins um because we're going to miss a week and he's going to come out and he's going to get one of those patented ricky wins and we're not going to be on him because we've been off him forever so i'm putting five bucks on ricky at least every single week yeah. <laughs> from here on out yeah. but anyways um it was a pretty good sweat knowing that i had uh, going kind of into well it was about midday saturday uh all three guys kind of in contention norlander was doing all right burger was up there um molinari was in there but they kind of tailed off um you, you know for dfs zalatoris was up there big for me last week so him and Molinari kind of let me down um, on DFS, but Berger got the win, and I wasn't so sure about that win uh, Saturday when he put up, I think it was a double on 18, um, coming home before the round was over. So him coming out, uh, two Eagles on Sunday, that approach shot, I knew it was over when he put that on in two on 18. The second time, followed that up with that huge Eagle putt, and I knew it was over then. So it, was, it ended up being a good week. I didn't play very much in DFS. Um, I was away with some stuff and uh, showdown. I ended up playing one lineup I made late Saturday night and ended up ended up cashing. So the showdown streak stayed alive for me. Hit like nine of the last ten. So I'm ready to go this week for full tournament tiers. Um, I've got some Thrive Fantasy and that kind of just le leads me into that a little bit. It's a new sponsor um, that's together with us at Roto Pros. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it here. Um, so it's kind of set up for prop betting. Um, so what you want to do is you pick your props and for PGA, uh, you slide over here and you choose your contest. And once we choose a contest, let's just grab one here and it is per round. So they have new contests for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, one round of golf. I'm just going to talk about golf specifically here quick. Um, like John Rahm over under 69 and a half strokes. Then we got Rory McIlroy over under uh, half, uh, 0.5 Eagles, Dustin Johnson, uh, over under three and a half birdies. Um, so there's 10 players listed here, 10 different props for 10 different players, and you have to choose five of them. And then they got the ice pick. So if someone was to be out or withdraw or whatever, you pick two extra ones just in case. <clears throat> you have those two set aside. And then once you enter this contest, you just get points. So if you choose John Rahm um, under, so you think he's going to get like a 68 in round one, you pick under, and he does. He gets shoots a 67, 68, anything under 69 even counts because it's 69 and a half is the number. You're going to get 110 points. So for every prop that you get right, you get the points designated with that prop. And then you're just competing against other people in that contest, just like the regular DFS that you're used to. So you can have double ups, GPPs. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. They cover a lot of sports. Golf is really fun um, each and every day going about playing those single entries. 
um, just each single round, kind of like showdown. So it really, it's something that I, I've really got onto just because I do play a lot of showdowns. So um, I'm also going to have a video going over the whole entire site and how to play, how to enter a lineup, how to use the sheet, because I'm going to have this data downloaded with the tab on the sheet for this week's PGA. I'm going to show you how to use that. That's going to be in a later video. Probably going to see that tomorrow afternoon or sometime on Wednesday. Without further ado, let's jump right into this week. So like you said, we're back to uh, one course. So I'm just going to let you um, jump in here and talk a little bit about the course um, and what you think is going to happen this week, some of your key stats and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So I'll turn it over to you. Sorry, I was on yeah, mute. It's been a while. It's been a <laughs> so, while. Yeah, so <laughs> so Riviera um, is a very fun course year in, year out. It's one of the tougher ones on tour, which is always fun for me to watch. Uh, we don't usually see anybody get close to 20 under. I know DJ in 17 was, was 17 under, but he won by five shots. Yeah. Um, but if, if you look, they, they're usually approaching those low teens, and sometimes if, if the – weather hits just right, then you're looking at single digit winners. Last year, Scott was the only person to touch double digits at 11 when he won. Holmes, 14 the year before, 12 under for Bubba. So so what I'm taking from that is that it's more of a grinded out course. It's a ball striker's course. You got to hit these fairways. You got to hit these greens um, or you're going to be struggling for pars all week. And then you're going to need a hot putter uh, to save yourself. And you don't want that all week long. I mean, you can maybe skate by for a nine hole stretch or something, but um, you're going to need your, your all around game on. So, so some of the key things that I'm looking at um, is obviously ball striking and approach are the two biggest ones weighted for me. Um, I threw driving distance in there because you, if you look back at these leaderboards, you see bombers winning these tournaments. I mean, JB Holmes is kind of known as a bomber. Bubba has a great track record here. He's obviously a bomber. DJ, he, he can win anywhere. So I wouldn't really classify that as just a bomber, but he yeah. is. Um, there, there's Bryson top five last year. Rory, Thomas Peters was even top five in 2017. I mean, they, these are, this is a bomber's course. Um, so I threw driving distance in there, threw some around the green um, a little bit in there because you are going to miss some greens. Um, you're obviously not going to hit every green this week. And it's very important at a course and a event like this to get your pars and, and move ahead. Um, and then the par five, par four range from 450 to 500 is pretty important. There's a ton of holes that fall in that range. Um, and then long iron proximity is also a a fairly tough one, even though if you are bombing it, you're still going to have some mid to long irons into some of these holes. So that's kind of the things that I'm looking at this week. What about you? Yes. So I'm with you on ball striking. Um, that's definitely going to be number one for me when breaking down that ball striking, I'm with you with distance. Um, the rough isn't very penal this week, two inches on average, I believe. So it's not too bad there. So, I mean, if you're going to, if, the, the average, I think between 50 and 53, 54%, something like that is the average uh, driving accuracy out here. So if, if guys are going to be missing, the rough isn't very penal. You're going to be hitting a lot of approach shots from the rough. I want guys that are going to be, you know, um, hitting their wedges versus hitting, you know, seven, eight, nine iron. So I'm with you on that. Got a little bit of rough proximity in there as well, because there's going to be a lot of shots coming from the rough. Um, and then around the green, definitely that's going to be, a, that's always more of a cash play. Um, my cash model, I'm always looking at that around the green a little bit because it's going to save guys and keep them in inside the cut line versus, you know, giving up two or three strokes back to the field kind of thing. Like the, um, uh, who was that? That Lashley last week, that was made me very happy watching him four putt that hole. I know some people probably weren't too happy, oh, but God. That, he just smashed his putter after that yeah. green and he oh, looked back yeah. instantly like, what did I do? And then he just pointed at the caddy, <laughs> you go clean that up. <laughs> Yeah, but that was great. That was generally, great. I'm looking at distance approaches. The the par fours from 400 to 450. Again, proximity distance for me it depends on the golfer that I'm looking at. If I'm looking at a, a bomber, I'm going to be looking more in the mid range, 150 to 175. If I'm looking at maybe a shorter hitter, like Kutcher always does good here. Um, he's one of those shorter hitters, but he's also got some pretty good long irons and a really, really hot putter. As you can see, he's rolled that hot putter 
pretty much every time he's come here. Um, we'll talk about uh, some picks here in a minute, but that's generally what I'm looking at um, this week. And we do have a little bit of a stars and scrubs setup, I guess you could say, just simply because there's so many top guys. There's such a top loaded field here. So you really have to narrow it down and you have to kind of go in and pick the player. You know, got really got to, um, what am I trying to say? Lock in on a player and just ride it. You can't really, unless you're building 150 lineups, you're not going to get exposure to all of these guys. So you just kind of got to go with one or two in each range. So that's something that we're going to discuss here. We're going to jump into a few picks. I'm going to let you start things off kind of in that. We got a lot of players here in that top range. Um, 14 players from 9K on DraftKings up to DJ at 11-3. How do you see that top tier playing out this week in your lineup builds early on? Yeah, so like you said, this is a very top-heavy field with how strong it is. Um, do you know right off, I know that you always have the field strength on your sheet. Uh, it's 163. How does that compare to some of these? I mean, obviously, it's one of the strongest of the year, I would say, right? Yeah, for difficulty. Outside of majors and players. Well, and I think it has ranked, you know, when I'm looking at the data here, it has ranked 10, 10, yeah, it's top 10 hardest course last three years. And that counts majors. <laughs> so, I mean, on the regular regular rotation, it's it's a top five, top six hardest course year in and year right. out. So, Yeah, as far as picks in this top range, um, it's loaded with guys that I like. Obviously, we can't play them all, and we're going to have to kind of pick and choose what kind of build we're going to do. Is it going up to DJ and then maybe getting a, a high 8K guy, or you might could squeeze a 9K guy if you like some value? Um, or do you play two guys in that 9K range or right at 10K? It's, it's kind of going to go – that's something I'll decide later in the week. But if I'm paying all the way up, I think – it's tough to go against Justin Thomas, but, man, how do you not play just the extra 600 for Dustin Johnson? I mean, he crushes this place, playing some of the best golf. I think maybe the week week off helped him last week um, more than anything, getting a little bit of rest coming back from Saudi Arabia, um, obviously playing great golf in down there, winning. Um going to rank first in all of your models. He's the best player in the world. I don't know how you could go against him if you're – paying up this week unless you're just taking a pivot in GPPs. Um, as far as right around that 10K mark, there's a ton of names that I'm interested in. Um, I've got to narrow that down as I get closer to Wednesday night. But Bryson, he's been pretty good here, improved steadily over his three appearances. Um, Brooks, I mean, he's not had the greatest history here, played here twice in 17, missed the cut and made the cut last year. Um, but he's back, I feel like, 9,700. And a tough course is, is one that you would think he, he thrives on as well. Cantlay, he nearly won here in 2018 when he finished fourth. I remember he was right in contention all the way to the end, and he's backed it up with two more top 20 finishes, and he's playing great after a – I mean, he opened with a 62 last week yep. um, at Neville. So, and then Morikawa is another guy, 26 last year. If you look at his ball striking stats from, from these first couple events of the year, seventh place and seventh place. But man, oh man, let me. I thought I had that up. Hang on one second. Morikawa? Yeah, Morikawa. Oh, he, he is, gained eight and a half strokes. I mean, he's always been Sony. a top tier ball striker. Over 11 strokes between the Sony and the Tournament of Champions, he's gained over 11 strokes on approach. Just absolutely incredible. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, eight and a half strokes at the Sony on oh. approach. I mean, he's always been one of those top tier ball strikers. Looks very good to start this year. Um, he's had a few weeks off, but he was he was the first bet that I locked in at thirty three to one for this week. I think he fits the course perfectly, and he's shown the ability to win in these top tier fields. So that doesn't scare me. What what are you thinking up here this week? Well, it's it's more of a gut feel, I guess, between DJ and, and Thomas. If I was building 20 max this week, I'd probably split them or be like, you know, 55, 45 on my exposure to those two. Um, but I, I do feel Thomas. I do like that $600 discount on DraftKings, 400 on FanDuel a little bit. Mm -hmm. For my lineup builds, it's making it a little bit easier early on. I've only started a few lineups, but Thomas definitely stands out. Xander's number two in my model. Um, 
I like him kind of down there at 99 at his price. He's having trouble winning these, winning these tournaments, but from a points per dollar perspective, under 10 K for him with top 25s and all three appearances here with the top 10 in 2018. And he's coming in off two. well, should, he should have at least won the um, either the <laughs> WMPO or the farmers. He he's gained a lot of strokes, ball striking. Um, that's five straight events where it's tracked. I think he would have gained both at the masters as well. So we'll just say six straight events where he's gained strokes off the tee and approach together. And then he's gained uh, 11 and a half strokes putting over those last two events. And POA is his best grass for putting as well. So it's all just coming together at his price tag. I think we can go like a Thomas Shoffley. Uh, that's still going to be a stars and scrubs, but maybe a little bit different than others. And then the other two that are right behind you talked about, Cantley and Morikawa for sure. They're top 10 in my model. Um, they both have course history. They both have excellent form. They both fit the stats model. So they check all the boxes too. So those four players are kind of, be my initial core at the start of the week so i guess i'm kind of ignoring the bottom of that 9k range which i think is going to obviously take some uh ownership you got adam scott there uh he won last year he's got uh, four finishes of t11 or better in his last five events here you got hideki i want to ask you what to do with hideki here this week because he like he's a top 25 machine top 10 machine lately at this course but he's coming in with terrible form he can't putt uh to save his life but the ball striking, I think, is there. Do you take a chance? Is he going to be low owned? Um, you would think so. I, I don't think I can go there this week. It just kind of initial look, just because I like the upper eights and I like the upper nines. Um, I don't know if a bunch of people are going to do that, like you said, and skip this lower nine k range. Um, but that's the way that I'm leaning this week. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um. What's and his then, betting number? His betting number on the sheet here, I've got, uh, we're talking Morikawa, right? That's what you said, 31? No, at, uh, Hideki. Oh, Hideki, yeah. 45 sorry. to 1? Yeah, and I've got him down. If you can get him at 45 to 1, he opened at like 36, I've got on the sheet here. Um, so oh, his wow. number's kind of fallen back. I don't mind that actually. Like he's going to pop one of these weeks, <laughs> I think. But Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe that's what you do. You take a, um, shot on him betting wise if he pops he's going to be in contention um if he doesn't he's probably going to get you a 40 50th place finish so right um like he's done the last couple couple of events so i think that might be the place if, if i go anywhere with the decky i would take the course history jump on him betting wise especially now that he's dropped to 45 that's on uh draft king sportsbook too okay no, that kind of feels like a like the, what we were talking about with Fowler. He's becoming hard to play on DFS, but you know, <laughs> yeah. at these numbers that we're getting, these guys that we know have won tournaments, we know can win tournaments still. Um, they've got course history at some of these places. The form may not be there. That's kind of that form really pushes that number down. Like you said, forty-five to one. Those guys, I'm definitely with you on betting outrights on those guys versus um, jamming them into a, a DFS lineup. Um, because jumping down into the next range, I'll kick it off here. I'm going to steal your guy from you. I do want to ask you um, on his ownership here, but uh, Neiman um, at 8,800, he's coming off back-to-back second-place finishes. He doesn't have course history, but if we start looking at his – I just uh, had it on the other screen here, kind of going through with these fantasy national screens. It really popped out with Neiman. He's, he's third in ball striking this season. I, I kind of broke down a model looking at – um, some some of my key stats just for the 2021 season, which goes back to the U.S. Open. Um, he's gained over 11 strokes on approach the last two weeks. He's gained strokes um, both off the tee and approach in four, five straight events. He's he's excellent around the green here lately, gaining about a stroke per per event, and he's gaining about uh, one to two strokes putting. Like he is li- literally his all around game is there. I think. Um, this price is maybe getting up there, but I think it's very warranted. Uh, what do you think his ownership is going to be with a T44 and a T69 course history? Yeah, um, man, it's hard to ignore the, this his, his ball striking as well and his overall game, just the form overall. Um, he's coming in here very hot. He doesn't have great course history. If I remember in last year when we were previewing this tournament, something we talked about was um the the u.s amateur here i yep. think he was one of the guys who played in it it doesn't 
obviously carry tons of weight, but um, at least saw it even more than these two events, but um, that he's played. So I, I'm fine definitely jumping back in at, at 8,800 this week. Um, he's he's one of my top options here in this 8K range. Um, love, love the top side of it. Awesome. Anyone kind of down in that uh, low 8K, mid 7K, high 7K range? I'm having trouble with yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, the other guy right there is Hovland. Um, he's he's not played here, but he is a guy that I would think would fit this course as well, just with, with the way that he plays. He does struggle a little bit around the green, um, but he's a guy that's going to hit tons of greens for you. Um, so, so I like Hovland at 87. And then a guy that people might jump off of um, that I think I might get back on it. And I like his but betting number as well on DraftKings Sportsbook is Zalatoris. He, he's another T to green guy, 8,300 now. Um, 55th last week might have disappointed some people uh, with where he was priced at. Uh, so maybe it's time to jump back on. I mean, that was one of his, I think, worst finishes in a very long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so maybe it's a – did he actually play here in 2015? I'm seeing that, yeah. He was – I think he was an amateur. I think oh, he was okay. one of those amateurs that got in the field. I'm, I'm not 100%. I, I'm not – it wasn't – it never used to be an invitational, I think, back then. I don't think it was an invitational until this yeah. year, to be honest with you. It was an open before. But, yeah, he. I, I went back and looked at that, and he played in uh, 2015. Oh, yeah. So he's he's my That's favorite in that low, low 8K range. The upper sevens is, is – Another spot, like you said, I'm having trouble with it as well. Um, there's a few guys that I could see taking a shot on. Siwoo Kim has been playing fairly well um, other than last week. I mean, he's, he was third here in 19, but, he, I mean, he's kind of a fringe-type guy. Um, answer seems like he would fit this course. He's not had better than a 43rd. Um, just kind of the way he plods around these places sometimes. Yeah. Kevin Na has pretty good history here, but I'm never excited about playing him. No. So I'm probably not going to be playing Na. Ortiz has been good here, four appearances, top 26 in all appearances, so maybe you go there. Um, but there's none that I get super excited about until we get to below, like 7,400 and below. You know, one guy that uh, I w – at first I was like, you know what, he's GPP only for me. And then as I got looking at the stats, I got breaking down his current form. I got breaking down um, his POA putting, uh, ball striking, everything. Cameron Tringali, uh, he was ranked 11th, and that's what drew me to him on my initial model. I'm like, geez, I don't know, 7,600 seems like he should be like 72, 6,800 or something in a, in a big field like this. Got looking at things. I'm going to tell you, he's got three straight top 20s. Um, four of his last five are top 20s. He's made the cut in six straight events, and he's gained strokes. The ball striking has been incredible. He gained 4.2 uh, strokes on approach and 6.3 strokes putting at the at the Pro-Am um, at Pebble there. Right. So he's got – and Poe is his best green uh, grass – sorry, his best grass to putt on when, in terms of looking at this putting yeah. splits there. So – He's the guy in that range I'm probably going to lean to. I do like Carlos Ortiz as well. He's been he's been doing good. He's he's got some course history here as well. But uh, Tringali's a little bit cheaper. Um, if you need that savings, he's got the course history. He has missed I think one cut in the last nine. I think he's made eight of the last nine cuts here. Um, some pretty high finishes. I mean, I'll take a T30 like he had last year at 7600, especially in cash games. But he's got top 10 upside, top 25 upside. Um, he's got five of those here as well. So I think he kind of fits the bill um, all the way around uh, stats, model, course history, and form. So he's the guy that I'm going to kind of be leaning to going down into that mid 7K range and down who are a few that you're looking at there. Yeah, so the top one for me is, is Lanto Griffin, um, 7,400, 37th here in his debut a year ago. Um, he's another guy. He, he's not super long. Um, that's the only thing I guess about him, but he's a guy that can get around these tough courses. Um, and it's shown the ability to do it like at the farmers. I mean, it's usually known as a fairly tough place to play Gained almost six strokes on approach when he finished seventh there. Um, that was nice to see. He, he's kind of improved each event through the, um, uh, this year so far, except for the Amex, it took a little bit of a setback. Mm -hmm. um, but but I really like that, uh, the way he played there at the Farmers. And I like that he 
I mean, you think he wouldn't fit the course completely, but 37th here a year ago in his first look at it, I'll definitely take that. Um, and then Sam Burns, 7,400. He's just been playing Does solid that seem golf. cheap for him how good he's been playing? That seems really cheap. Yeah, for him. yeah. 39th, 22nd, 18th, the last three yeah. events. Um, 23rd here last year. Um, I'm going to expect that he's going to get around – nothing crazy 13 14 percent it's about the highest you see when it gets to this range in ownership so that that's a thing that never really scares me off of people down here is ownership unless for some reason they pop over 20 but you rarely see that in this value range um and i mean that's 80 some percent that are not playing him so um right. I, I definitely like burns and griffin the most and then maybe uh, Corey Connors as well. Um, he seems like his ball striking fits here. He didn't miss the cut in his only appearance, but I feel like he can pop back. He's uh, popping for me a little bit in my model this week. Yeah, same here. I'm going to be GPP only with Connors just because that putter is just such a roller coaster ride. Um, Burns is my <laughs> favorite down here. I also like, you know, if, I think Burns is going to see probably, I would think he's the highest owned guy, 7,500 and down. Um, with yeah, that, I do think. think Connors is a good pivot, and I think Luke List is a good pivot. He's got excellent mm -hmm. uh, course history. He's very up and down, um, but when he gets going and starts making birdies, he's got the distance as well. Um, he's obviously shown that he can contend, or not contend here, sorry, but at his price at 7300 he's got a T20, T26, T15, and T30 in four of his five appearances um, in which he's made the cut. He missed the cut in 2017, but that's a pretty good track record for someone at 7300 who also comes in with some decent, he was on a terrible run, missing cuts like five or six in a row. And then T21, T10, T30. So he's coming back on. He's making birdies, 7,300. I think he's a pivot playoff Burns. A um, couple of cheap guys that I like going down a little bit, uh, Wyndham Clark and uh, Ken Hoon Lee. Um, they've both got course history here. Uh, Lee's played here twice, top 25s in both. Uh, Wyndham Clark was a T17 last year. Uh, Lee's coming off a T2. Um, Clark's probably the one, if you want to go stars and scrubs and cash games, I think you could really go with Clark. He's made six of his last, uh, seven cuts, uh, with a couple top 15s in there, four top 25s, his last two or last three events were down a little bit, but T54, T32, T36, making the cuts and anything kind of in that T30 to T40 range, I would take from a 7,100 in cash. And then I just think he's got upside that top 15 upside, which is definitely enough to pay off at uh, 7,100. And then uh, Naismith, Matthew Naismith again. He looked like he was kind of going off the rails last week. He was kind of worried, but he really put it back together <laughs> after having that bad open yeah. round to make the cut and finish T16 yeah. at the end of the day. So I'm going to be back, mm -hmm. jumping back on board with him. Um, his approach game is what stands out. He has gained, and I think my, my stats on the sheet now are 90% this year with a 10% weight on last year still. And he's gaining over 9.9 uh, .9 strokes per round um, on his approach shot. So that's that's one area that really stands out for me with him. And then Chucky, three sticks, uh, getting Howell out there again. He's going to be the GPP pivot kind of down in this range. He's got some good course history. He's got the distance. He doesn't have the form coming in. But before those last two missed cuts, he was kind of churning out top 30s, top 25s pretty consistently. So I'm going to be going back to uh, Charles Howell here as a kind of a GPP value play down in that range. Any other low guys you're looking at? Yeah, um... My favorite in the 6K range is, is Harold Varner. Um, I just think, I mean, he's missed the cut the last two years at Pebble Beach. Maybe um, the course rotation or something just doesn't suit him. I'm not 100% sure, but but he played well here a year ago, 13th, um, after struggling for quite a while here. Um, but his ball striking, he's a guy that when he gets on, it, his ball striking can get it done tee to green um i'm trying to pull up his stats here yeah so he's he gained last week um in the round that he played at pebble beach um t to green he just missed putts really and he was 13th at the waste management gaining almost five strokes on approach and seven total t to green so i'm willing to give him a pass on last week um and think he can get back to, to what he did here a year ago, which would be perfectly fine at, at 6,700. Um, going back up to one guy, that's really the only guy that I've got my eye on below 7K so far. Yeah, same here. Um, so 
going back to to Connors, do you think a, a I don't play cash games in, in golf um, very often at all, but wouldn't don't you think that a popular cash game strategy would be to pair Burns and Corey Connors together? I, I don't maybe not Connors just because he missed the cut in his only appearance, but he's made nine cuts in a row. Um, with the worst finish in those being um, he did have a 61st at the CJ Cup. But other than that, 37th at the Farmers where he still gained T to green. He's gained T to green in every event of those except for the CJ Cup. Um, 17th at the Waste Management, 37th Farmers, and then back in the fall, 17th, 10th, 10th at the Masters, 24th, 8th. He seems so consistent, and the, and the putter has not been awful. Um, he's been almost flat with the putter in those across the, those events, which is big for him compared to what we were seeing back in August uh, when he was losing like four and eight strokes putting per event. Um, but yeah. but I feel like he would be a popular with how consistent he's been, but maybe not. Yeah, I think for cash games, and I've I've got away a little bit. I've been playing mostly for salary cap. I, mode on DraftKings and FanDuel, I've been playing pretty much GPPs like three max. I'll I'll do a three max every week, and then for tiers is where I'll play cash games. And then cash games, I really go heavy when it comes to showdowns. I feel like I get a little bit more edge going off the comparing. I play round two to four, um, and I like to compare uh, my pre-tournament models along with how everything went round one and how the players look round one. Given that it's not like a crazy wind week where one day, one set of uh, players is getting like really windy conditions and another isn't. So on a normal conditions, which we're, looks like we're going to see this week for, for the first two days, at least um, that's kind of the way I'm looking at cash games, but no, I'm with you that I think a really strong cash lineup this week, you could go burns. You could get Connors in there. You're going to get two guys that make a lot of cuts there. You could go Tringali as well. He's been making a lot of cuts as course history. So with those three guys in the mid seven K range, I don't have my DraftKings app open, but I'm pretty sure that's going to leave you enough to, um, you know, if you wanted to go two of if you, below the 10 K range is probably the way I would go. You can probably get Shoffley, Cantley, Morikawa, and Neiman, at least three of those because Neiman's down at 8,800. So I think you could get Neiman, Shoffley, if you don't want to go Shoffley, you can go Morikawa and Cantley. Like, there's definite way to get a very, very feel very comfortable at your cash lineups this week. Yeah, one one more guy, and, um, and then I'm done throwing players out there. But um, 6,900, Doug Gim been playing pretty well, and he popped up when I was looking at the U.S. Amateur back um, to see who had played here. 2017, he was runner up in the U.S. Amateur. Um, in an extra hole lost to Doc, Doc Redman. Doc, um, that's right. Yeah, so Doug Gim, 6,900. Um, maybe I've been, he's a value guy as well this week. I've been labeling him for value a few weeks. Like Statistically, he's been standing out Like um, on yeah. the approach shots. Around the green, he's been good. Uh, overall, yep. putting isn't like elite or anything, but it's not bad. He's gaining strokes putting. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Poe is not his best green, but I mean, that's a minor thing when we're, we're looking down at this range uh, proximities there. Like he just, he hits on so many things. Um, he's been playing really well lately. And then I didn't even know about that correlation there with that. So, I mean, that just puts the cherry on top is I just uh, <clears throat> put him as one of my favorite uh, value plays here. I mean, that worked last yeah. week. You uh, quickly got me on burger on this <laughs> very video. So, uh, Doug, so does that mean him top 20. To, is that where he yeah, asked supposed to, what is he top? Top 20 here. Uh, he's 200 to 1 to win. Yeah. Uh, 14 to 1, top 10. Not bad. Uh, is he? I don't know if they have top 20s. Though. I, I don't on my book have top 20s though yet. Yeah. yeah, I got him up. I just can't find him. The Canadian um, book though. There he is. Five, five and a half to 1. Five and a half to 1 for a top 20. Mm-hmm. Not bad. I think I'll take it. He's been he's been pretty solid. So I'll I'll have to think about that as the week goes on. But speaking of betting, yeah. um, before we get into our one and dones, we talked about a few guys that were betting here early on. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple that I'm looking at. I'm just gonna go over to our Slack chat here. I did post them. I better talk about them. Uh, my first ones were I really like the Brooks number twenty five to one. 
Um, <clears throat> that's maybe more me sad that I didn't get on the 50 to one number last week and listen to you. Uh, but I'm going to get on it this week at 25. Uh, JT, I like it 16 to one uh, winning this thing. I got Neiman 55 to one. And then uh, one long one right now is Burns at 100 to one. I'm probably going to throw, I don't know if I'm, I've got two guys kind of 25 to one and higher in there. So I'm probably going to try and find some more value in the 30, 40 range and get two guys. Who are you looking at? Yeah, so the only one that I've – well, I locked in Ricky. I threw my five bucks on him at 150 to one, which I almost puked at when I saw. Um, so, but I, when as soon as I opened it, I had to throw a few dollars on him. So I do have him locked in. I would not count that like a go bet that. If you've not been betting him, don't bet it. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> the only true play that I've locked in is Colin Morikawa, like I mentioned earlier, 33 to one. Um, I'm still trying to decide. I, this is an event with how strong this field is. I feel like the, a winner is going to come for sure below 50 to one, I would think. Um, if you're taking longer than that, I think I would definitely tag the top top five or top 10 bet on with it. Um, or if you have each ways, do that. Yeah. Guys that I have my eye on is up top is Cantlay and, and Bryson. Um, is where I'm looking, and then maybe a Neiman, um, possibly Zalatoris. Z- Zalatoris is 90 to one. I think he's probably going to be the next guy that I just I go ahead and bet with the top five. Um, he's another guy that played in in the U.S. Amateur here, but um, and does have a little court tournament experience. So 90 to one um, for where he's been the last year, really since I think it was the U S open, I'll definitely mm-hmm. take that shot on him. Um, I think he's going to break through. Maybe he does it at one of these big boy events, but like I said, up top, Morikawa, Cantlay and Bryson are, are the guys that I have my eye on. Um, that's another thing in our, in our Slack chat, you and I both post our bets throughout the week when we make them, but definitely a recap and any new ones on Wednesday night. Uh, and the, the thing is, we, we rarely post more than four outrights each. I mean, four to five outrights each. Um, you could get in there and pick your favorite four or five or, or bet them all at, at a little bit smaller unit size. Um, there's not too many there. We're, we're not out here giving you 10 bets per each per week. It, it's four to five people. So that's something we've tried to add on. Um, for everybody who can do that so be sure to hop in there no that's a great point is you can go ahead and bet 20 people to win and really cover the field but are you going to make any money at the end of the day when you hit one of the winners if you're in it just to pick a winner great go throw a dollar on 20 30 guys you're you got a pretty good chance of of uh you know having the winner at the end of the day but if you're trying to make money and looking for value you don't just go bet like the three favorites on the board that's just you know at you're not going to cover enough with, with winning on one of them to cover all of your bets. And that's really what you're looking to do. So when I do six, um, I I'm kind of deciding if I'm betting a favorite, someone that's like 10 to one or, or less, I'm probably going to go heavy on that guy. And then maybe bet a couple long shots versus this week. I got JT 16 to one and, and Kepka 25. So I got two in that, that close range. So I, I'm generally going to go then like two more guys. And like I said, the 30 to fifties, one between like 50 and 80 and then one long shot um and then again anything outside the top 40 i'm always each way betting um not all sites have that just means that you're putting the second bet at the same amount of your first bet but you get that golfer um it's usually you get him at like top five um but you get a quarter of the odds but you get to cover the top five so it just kind of covers you when that those long shots you know really contend but they don't quite get that win it's really disappointing when you get that close and you right. don't get anything back for them so that's kind of what we do there if you don't have each way like dane said get in and get uh throw a top five on them throw a top 10 on that same outright bets that you're going and just kind of cover them that way you can get some extra money for your golfers that do win um because then you collect mm-hmm. the win the top five the top 10 the top 20 money if it's the right guy um and it all depends on your bankroll but then definitely if you're in it to make money don't just go out there bet the top five guys on the betting board um and expect to you know profit at the end of the day um you you really gotta you know do it strategically um where you can you know get the best value out of it so definitely hit us up at slack chat we can help you with that if you're new to betting um other than that you're one and done this week 
It was early yeah, who, on. Who I know we, I changed <laughs> three times. I, I'm so glad uh, we've mentioned in our Slack that we're both we're doing a combined um, one and done that we're kind of talking about Wednesday night and just locking it in. We finally hit our first winner last week. Um, Burger time. We had a second place a few weeks ago, but um, I think it who, was it Finau that was second, but yeah. Burger um, locked in the Burger win that hopped us up the board. So um, the two that I have my eye on right now are Morikawa and Cantlay. Uh, what are you thinking? I got Neiman on my list, but I don't know if this is an event I really want to get outside those elite players because, I mean, normally we're, we're seeing the elite players win this event, although, I mean, let's go back and look at J.B. Holmes two years ago. That seems like a little bit of an outright. <laughs> James Hahn James in 2015. Hahn, there's a couple outliers. <laughs> but guys that generally, this is a course where I, course history is something I look at more than most. Um, it's kind of up there with, like, Augusta in terms of how much I look at and weigh course history. So I'm with you on Cantley. Um, he's definitely there for me. Shoffley is up there. And then other than those two, I'm kind of looking at that Morikawa and Neiman, kind of those four guys that are green under the 10K DK range. I just, I have, this is the furthest I've been from a decision on a Monday night. Um, I've usually got it narrowed down to two by now, at least three. I really have no idea, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> So many options. I think I like going with Morikawa together uh, for ours because um, I usually look for someone that you're very high on, someone that I'm high on, um, and mm -hmm. kind of checks all the boxes. So I think together uh, we're kind of leaning Morikawa, but I know for my own other one that I'm in, I really have no idea, and I'm really shit in the bed there. So, But as long as we win ours, um, that's all I'm worried about because the other one isn't <laughs> worth very much, and uh, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> hey we're we're in the money i know it's a long way to go but I'm, i don't know if i've ever been in the money and i want and done so <laughs> let's keep it a up. good mojo to me yeah heck and right right on man well that was fun thanks for watching everyone um one last thing if you're not a rotor pros member you want to get in and get our uh, copy of our cheat sheet that you've seen on this video all of our plays um some of our one-on-one -on -one coaching our up to the minute uh, weather analysis um, our showdown analysis each and every round with skeleton lineups. Get over to rotorpros.com, click that sign up button. We've got uh, weekly, monthly, and yearly subscriptions. We've got free trial with each of those. And if you use promo code RP50, you're going to get 50% off after your trial's up on your first payment. Come in and join our winning team today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Like and subscribe to the video, and we'll see you soon. Good luck this week. Good luck.